In this video, we're going to take a look at using the sum and the product of roots to write quadratic equations. It turns out that if we use the quadratic formula, which would yield us two solutions to any quadratic equation, and take the sum of those solutions and the product of those, we would get, it would simplify to be the following. The sum would be negative b over a and the product would simplify to be c over a so we can use that to allow us to write quadratic equations if we're given the roots and it works for um, complex roots it works for roots that have uh, square roots and fractions and all this crazy sort of stuff. So let's take a look at an example here. For this first one we have 5, negative 9 as our roots. And the first thing we're going to do is take the sum of those roots. So 5 plus negative 9 is going to be um, negative 4. 5 plus negative 9 equals negative 4. Okay. So there's our sum. Then we're also going to take the product. So 5 times negative 9, which is negative 45. Now, we need to write them both over a. Well, just write them as a fraction. So in this case, we'll be over 1 and over 1. And my a, then, if we notice, we've got 1 uh, as the denominator in each. So that's 1. My b is equal to, that's from the sum, be sure that you keep track of where each of these fractions comes from. We have negative 4 and it's the sum is negative b over a. So b in this case is going to be positive 4 and it really is the opposite of whatever is sitting up here. Then c is this one right here, the top, the numerator of the product which in this case is negative 45. Then what I'm going to do is just go ahead and write my quadratic equation. Remember that the general form for that is ax squared plus bx plus c and here's my a, b, and c. So it's going to be x squared plus 4x and then minus 45 and we could set that equal to y or you could set that equal to f of x, whatever uh, notation you're asked to use. So the solutions or the roots of that particular equation would be 5 and negative 9. One easy way to check that would be to graph that and see where exactly it's crossing the x-axis and I think you'll find that it'll be at 5 and negative 9. All right, let's take a look at this next one. So we have negative 4 and 7. First thing we're going to do again is take the sum of those two. So negative 4 plus 7, add those up and we get 3. Then I take the product, so I have negative 4 times 7, which is going to be negative 28. Okay, again, they're not fractions, so I'm going to make them into fractions by putting each over 1 and then I can pick out my a, b, and c. So in this case, again, a is 1, b is the top number from our sum, and remember it's negative b, so we have to take the opposite of what's sitting there, which in this case is going to be negative 3. Then we have c equals negative 28. Now, again, just fill those in to get our equation. So we have y equals the a is 1, so that would be 1x squared or just x squared. b is negative 3, so negative 3x, and then negative 28. Let's take a look at one that involves some imaginary stuff and see how that works. Well, I'm going to do the same thing, so I'm going to find the sum first. So I'm going to go negative 5 plus 2i, and then plus negative 5 minus 2i. Oops minus 2i. Okay, when I do that, I can just forget those parentheses because we're adding. So I have negative 5 combining like terms here. 2 negative 5 is going to be negative 10. Then I have 2 positive 2i minus 2i. That's just going to go away and I'm left with just negative 10. 
Okay, then I'm going to take the product of those two things. So negative 5 plus 2i, and that's going to be multiplied by negative 5 minus 2i. Okay, now we need to FOIL that out. So first terms here, negative 5 times negative 5, that's going to be 25. Then negative 5 times negative 2i is going to be plus 10i. Then we have 2i times negative 5, which is going to be minus 10i. And finally, we have 2i times negative 2i, which is going to be negative 4i squared. Okay, let's see if we can do some cleaning up there. We'll have 25, the plus 10i minus 10i, that just cancels out. And this i squared, remember, is defined as negative 1. So we have negative 4 times negative 1 makes that plus 4. So we have 25 plus 4, which is equal to 29. Again, they're not fractions right now, so I'll put them over 1, each of them. And then I can pull out my a, b, and c. So in this case, my a is equal to 1. My b is equal to, remember, that's the sum part. Right here, it is negative already, so I'll make it positive, 10. And my C in this case is going to be 29. So then from there I can write my quadratic equation. And it is Y equals X squared plus 10X and then plus 29. All right. Let's look at one more. This one's getting a little crazy here. For this one, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take the sum and the product of those roots. And I'm just going to change colors here so make sure we can keep it straight. So we have 1 plus the square root of 5 over 4 and then plus 1 minus the square root of 5 over 4. Okay, remember with fractions if we're adding them we have to have a common denominator and we do so that's good. Then <coughs> I'm gonna go ahead and just the bottom my numerate or my excuse me my denominator is gonna be 4 then I'll add combining like terms. So we have 1 and 1 there. So that's 2. Then plus square root of 5 minus square root of 5. That's going to cancel. And we're just going to have 2 over 4. Now, you might right away want to simplify that. But I'm going to just leave it for now because we're going to have to get a common denominator because both of these have A on the bottom. So whatever my denominator is in the product, I have to make sure it's the same thing on the sum. So I'm just going to leave it sit for right now, and we'll see what happens. So then we have 1 plus the square root of 5 over 4, and we're going to multiply that by 1 minus the square root of 5 over 4. Okay. On the top, I'm going to have to FOIL those things. So 1 times 1 would be 1. 1 times negative square root of 5 is negative square root of 5. Then we have square root of 5 times 1. That would be plus the square root of 5. Then minus, we have square root of 5 times minus square root of 5. It's going to be minus 5. Okay, so then I'm going to combine what I can. And we're going to get these two things cancel out. So it's just 1 minus 5. And on top, so we end up with negative 4 on top. Then on the bottom, remember when we're multiplying fractions, we multiply across on the bottom too. So 4 times 4, which would be 16. Okay, I can simplify this one, and that would simplify to one, negative 1 over 4. Now I have a common denominator here, which is going to be my a, in this case 4. So a is equal to 4. Then we have b which is, remember, the top, the um, numerator of the sum. So in, it's negative b, so this is going to be negative 2. b is equal to negative 2. And then c is equal to, right here, negative 1. Okay, finally write my quadratic equation. We get 4, excuse me, y equals, let me clean that up a little bit. There we go. Let's just change colors to make sure we can see it good. y equals 4x squared minus 2x minus 1. 
and again as we're doing these we can always check by graphing them and look for those x-intercepts where the graph crosses the x-axis okay so using the sum and product of roots if we know the roots of a quadratic equation we can write a quadratic equation with those roots by finding the sum and the product and remembering that the sum is equal to negative b over a and the product is equal to c over a once we pick out our a b and c then we can write our quadratic equation hope this video was helpful keep working hard on your math and i know you'll do fantastic